I guess some people just won't be happy unless they can make themselves and everyone else miserable. Greetings, and welcome back to Here's What I Heard. I'm Laura DeGottis, your hostess. Thank you for clicking on my little acre of the internet today. This week I have another article for you that I'm going to read to you from The Atlantic by a journalist. I believe this is a opinion piece, of course. It could be an antidote if you uh, wish. By a fellow, fellow by the name of Ed Young. Y-O-N-G. Basically, from what I said at the beginning, this person seems to take on the entire weight of the world. And for what? And what does he miss in, the, in this case? We'll find out. Let's, let's read this. To be honest with you, I can't believe that there's so many people are willing, ready, willing, and able to be miserable and to literally make it everyone else's fault, if you will. We'll read this article. From the Atlantic. I canceled my birthday party because of Omi. Here's how I thought through the decision. Okay, this is wonderful. I uh, like to hear what other people's thoughts are, but you kind of get the impression that he's the only one that knows how to think these things through. Like I said, by Ed Young. Well, your 40th birthday. I turned 40 today and I was planning to have a party. The Delta surge made me nervous about it. The arrival of Ami made me cancel it. 40, that's actually quite the milestone. There's a lot of people that don't reach 40. Uh, also, too, like I say, 40 is a milestone that's actually uh, middle-aged, basically, if you want to celebrate that. Usually, the decicentennials are milestones for most people. I don't know if it's because it's got a zero on the end of it or if it's just because of the fact that each person at that point has lived one more decade longer. Who knows? The plan was to have extended house party with a dozen a couple dozen people popping over for the weekend. On the one hand, it would have been an unmasked indoor event, the kind in which the coronavirus in all its incarnation spreads most easily, which they found out is not correct. On the other hand, everyone who is going to be there is fully vaccinated and most of them, myself included, have been boosted a month ago. I would have felt comfortable about that trade-off, especially if people got tested in the preceding days as eight friends did when they came over for Thanksgiving. So, this guy, under the premise of him protecting everyone else, makes everyone else either be vaccinated or test before they even think about coming to his house. Omi didn't much shift the way I weighed my personal risk. Although the new variant can evade some of our immune defenses, early data suggests that boosted people are roughly as protected against Omi infection as people with two vaccine doses against Delta. When did they start determining what these vaccines were going against? Just a question. I don't ever remember any kind of an official ex uh, exclamation about any of these. And I've actually read somewhere that there was five different types of the uh, Rust V, but I've only been able to find three names so far. So what's going on there? That protection is not foolproof, but even if immune systems can't block the virus from gaining an initial foothold, they still, they should still be able to stop it from causing too much damage. In which case we're finding, uh, there's a whole bunch of things that are, that are claiming that that's not true either. I'm not a doctor. I have no idea. I am actually haven't been involved in any, of the, in any of this other than reading people's antidotes and listening to Fauci and others when I can find them about this. 
Uh, haven't spoken to my doctor about it. Of course, I've got an appointment with him in April. But I would venture to say that if he thought that it was impo that important for me to get this, he would have probably called me and told me, look, you need to go protect yourself against this. Since it's a heart condition, I don't, I don't uh, think that he's going to even recommend it the next time I go see him. So who knows? I will have to keep you updated on that. So he says it doesn't, it didn't weigh his personal risk, although the new variant can evade and blah, blah, blah. He gives you a, <clears throat> he gives you a synopsis of what he thinks or what he thinks he's heard from all these people with regards to how effective their jabs are and whether or not they can pass this rust fee. And of course they, he explains none of this protection so far is foolproof. If I got the virus on my birthday, I'd expect to be knocked down for a time, but okay, by Christmas. So his birthday was on December the 17th. Christmas is on the 25th, so that's eight days. Okay. And I'd expect the same to be true for everyone who was meant to come. So he's already projecting this on these people. He, nobody actually seems to know whether or not, or how whether or not people are either symptomatic or asymptomatic. If you're asymptomatic, does that, doesn't that mean you are not sick? You don't have the misery, you're not going through the sniffles and the headache and all of that. Asymptomatic means you're not sick, right? Am I, am I missing something here? Like I say, he's actually already subjected all of these people to this, whether he knows whether or not they can acquire it or will be asymptomatic or not. I don't know the odds that this would happen, of course he doesn't, but I know that said odds are rising with every passing day. Oh yeah? How do you know this? Given how quickly and easily Omi is spreading, according to what people are telling you, right? Who are you listening to? Even among highly vaccinated populations. Need I say more? I know that many of my friends, like many vaccinated Americans, have been going out to restaurants, bars, gyms, and even movie theaters. I know that Omi, incubation period, the gap between infection and symptoms, he has to tell you what that is, seems unusually short so that even people who tested negative a few days ago might still be infected and infectious. And I also believe that since this article came out, they've, uh, the CDC has said something to the effect that the, um, the, uh, testing or the infection or the proof of infection lasts for 27 days. I could be wrong. So all of a sudden this guy is a virologist based on what he's heard, I guess the talking heads say with regards to how fast Omi is spreading and its incubation period. He knows more than I do. I'm still waiting to hear that kind of information. Did, 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 uh, did I miss something Fauci said the other day? Has he not been telling us this? I don't think so. I know that even mild infections can lead to long rusty. Again, this guy's become, this guy's literally become a virologist just based on, I guess, who he's listening to in the media, which he's a part of. So that bears some talking about as well. If someone got sick, I know others could too. Two as in also. A week later, many of my friends will spend Christmas with their own families. At best, a cluster of infections at the birthday party would derail those plans, creating days of anxious quarantine or isolation and forcing the people I love to spend time away from their loved ones. Oh, you are just so virtuous by thinking of all these people. At worst, people might unknowingly carry the virus to their respective families, which might include elderly, in immunocompromised, unvaccinated, partially vaccinated, or otherwise vulnerable people. Being born eight days before Christmas creates almost the perfect conditions for one potential super spreader event to set off many more. So he's claiming that his date of birth has something to do with this now. 
everybody's got to get their little finger in there somehow or another. Isn't that weird? Again, he uses potential and could. And almost. This guy's not sure of anything, is he? My friends, of course, are adults who can make informed decisions about their own risks and their own loved ones' risks. Not according to him, even though he says so. But the logic of personal responsibility, personal responsibility goes only so far. I agree. Especially when it's government mandated. Omi is spreading so rapidly that if someone got infected at my party, my decision to host it could easily affect people who don't know me and who had no say in the risks that I unwittingly opposed upon them. If they were that scared, they wouldn't have come to your party. Not to mention the fact, how in the world are you supposed to be responsible for people that you don't even know? I'm sorry, but virtue doesn't go that far, and it's okay to think of other people, again, but not when it's government mandated. Not when you're so scared that all of this stuff is going to happen that you paralyze yourself. I mean, what person in their right mind, especially in America, would want to miss a birthday party? Especially a landmark one. Omicron is unlikely to land me in the hospital, but it could... Send my guests, grandparents, or parents to one. It could. So you're going to, just because of the fact that it might do something or something might do something, and even though you're not spreading it, you're not going to let anyone else spread it at your birthday party either. And it's just, you basically have taken on, according to this, the weight of the world when it comes to this recipe. Then he states, I also know the state of those hospitals. Do you now? Over the past two years, especially while I was reporting a new article last month, which he makes a uh, link to. I'm not going to go read that. I don't really care. I'm on this article. It seems like he doesn't want us to know the rest of it. Go read the other article real quick. Hundreds of nurses, doctors, and other healthcare workers have told me that they and the system they work in are utterly broken. Yeah, I have to agree with that. You know why? Because when we were in the hospital and we asked these doctors these things, one of them was actually kind enough and polite enough to tell us the truth by saying, well, you know, these decisions aren't made by the doctors anymore. Who does that leave? A, insurance companies. B, the government, especially if you're on Medicare. And of course, a lot of these nurses and doctors worked through this uh, thing without any, without the benefit of even having vaccinations, and then they weren't even given a choice. Seems pretty counterproductive to me, like any giant government would be. Some have quit jobs or careers that they thought they would keep for life. Others spoke of a system in the midst of collapse in which the dwindling workforce can no longer provide a normal level of care for its growing pool of patients. Not just COVID patients, but all patients. Well, again, that's their fault and it was a failure of them because a lot of these other patients, I've actually had a few uh, of my friends now die of cancer and other things because during this scare, during this lockdown and all this other crap hole that they went through, people were not getting the appropriate uh, medical care then. They were either scared to go or they were told to hold off until the 15 days is over, which you can also now see has uh, developed or gall galloped into, what has it been now? Almost two, exactly two years. I think, what, in March, it'll be two years. Exactly two years. Several said that they're struggling to hold on to empathy for people who are putting themselves at risk. Shame on you. Shame on you. And if you have this opinion, then you're the problem. 
I believe that the if they even have a Hippocratic Oath anymore, the first of which is first do no harm. You're not supposed to have empathy. You're supposed to make people live. You're supposed to keep people alive. The empathy part goes out the window. When you start with the empathy part, that's when you start not being able to do your job properly. And I don't want any doctor or anyone in the healthcare profession that feels that way taking care of me. Many cried on the phone during our interview. Many just sounded hollow. Yeah, they pretty much, the system has pretty much eaten them up, chewed them up, swallowed them, thrown them back up, and spit them back out. Yes, you would be, you would be hollowed out too if you work, 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 and never got anything in return. Only to lose your job after you worked your ass off. Then he goes on, I feel haunted by their words when I make decisions about the pandemic. So this is what he thought through. Everybody going crazy. These people that actually had this uh, extreme experience with this because of the fact that they were the ones that had to deal with the people that got sick. But I guarantee you a lot of them would say that they are not they didn't just deal with covid another thing that hollowed them out was the fact that these people that could have gotten treatment or could have gotten life-saving treatment are now coming in and can't be done anything for they're being sent directly to hospice or made comfortable until they eventually perish When I stare out my window, the world looks normal, but I know through my reporting that it is not. This has already changed the way I behave and not just avoid, not just to avoid getting COVID. Shame on you too. As a reporter, you'd want to know and get to the bottom of this and want this to be changed. Instead, you're listening to everybody's scaredy cat screaming and yelling, stop, this has to stop, this has to stop, but it won't. It's never going to go away. But you reporting like this is part of the problem. You're so scared, so you want everybody else to be so scared too. Panic doesn't ever get you anything, especially in emergency situations. I've been trying to drive more carefully in the knowledge that if I got into an accident, I wouldn't get the same care that I would have two years ago. That is not true. It may not be as fast as you're used to, but you'll still get the care you're supposed to get. If not, again, worthy of lawsuits, if nothing else. I feel that the medical system in this country is at a tipping point. A fragile vase balanced so precariously on the edge that even a fly could knock it over. Omi is the bullet. It's one that we each choose whether to fire. No, nobody had a choice in this. They released it on the world and it was going to do what it was going to do. As we've been seeing, none of this stuff has worked. In fact, we now have an increase with even with all the precautions and all the masking and all the mandates and all of the stuff like that. We still have increases in this. However, I still have yet to see any actual proof that these hospitals are overrun. Please show me. Once again, you know that my uh, outlook on this is that the news isn't actually happening because these people in the elite news are telling us what's happening. I'm doing this because I'd like to hear from the other people, the people that actually create the news that it's actually happening to. So call, tell me down in the comments, are your hospitals overwhelmed where you are? I don't see it here. In fact, I just took my father for a uh, um, some kind of a heart scan that they did, and he had it was a it was an outpatient thing, but it was in the hospital. They were prompt, they were on time. I didn't see crowds or lines lined around the whole blocks or anything like that. Nobody was waiting for a whole lot of stuff. The hospital that my husband was in, even when he had COVID, wasn't crowded. In fact, they were so uncrowded that they had a fire on his floor one morning and was able to move the entire floor over to the next building. 
that doesn't seem overcrowded to me. Now, it might actually, in some cases, if they, especially if they're getting rid of their doctors and their nurses and they're cutting back on doctors and nurses, it takes longer and longer for people to get seen. That I understand, but I'm not seeing it where I live. Tell me down in the comments, how does it look where you live? We're the ones that know the news. You can actually go and take a picture. For many people, this will all sound like a lot of melodrama. <laughs> if you have to go there, then you are not confident in what you're saying. Because it does. He literally is so grandiose about his his thoughtfulness about people that he doesn't even know that might catch a, a virus, which actually, I don't care what you do, who you are, where you go, you always might catch something or might have something happen. That's where there's insurance. In fact, that's the basic, uh, that's the basic premise of insurance to actually put you back in a status in case something might happen. Notice that they don't cover things that actually do happen or will happen. They know will happen. They exclude all kinds of things. So, but that's only because of the fact that those aren't counted as things that might happen. It depends on the risk. But yeah, he says, this will sound like a lot of melodrama. It does. Surely the odds are still low that anyone at the party would have Omicron at all, let alone that any in resulting infections would be severe enough to bother a hospital. Okay, so you're going to cancel anyway? Even if that wasn't true, with people wildly partying and traveling, surely canceling any one event would be an impossibility, uh, an impossibly small drop in an impossibly large bucket. Yeah, so why are you bothering? You basically are now not only made yourself by yourself on your 40th birthday. Now you might have a little celebration or do it on your own or anything like that. But you've actually deprived everybody else that loves you and wants to be by you of that milestone with you. You've, 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 uh, uh, made decisions for people that you don't even know. You know, in fact, you've made decisions for people that you don't even know that you don't know. So, yeah, okay. I sympathize with those arguments, but I've tried to take to heart the lesson I keep writing about, that the pandemic is a collective problem that cannot be solved if people or government that tells you everything you need to know right there about this person and how they feel and what they feel they should be doing or why they're doing it, act in their own self-interest. Well, I've always been told that if you don't take care of yourself, you're never going to be able to take care of anyone else. So this collective thing is actually for the birds because it basically just means that the government gets to tell everybody in the world what to do and we have to do it whether it makes sense or not or whether it's actually working or not. I've tried to consider how my actions cascade to affect those with less privilege immune or otherwise. So now he's saying that immunity is some kind of a privilege. This is another thing, the privilege thing. <laughs> it's not a privilege to do certain things. It's not a privilege to be certain things. It's not a privilege to have certain things. It's not. The only privilege that any of us have, especially in the United States or up until just recently, is being in the United States. We've been free to pursue our own interests, so much so that you've got people out there identifying as <laughs> And nobody says anything. So again, what makes, it, this guy is so grandiose in his humanity and his his, his uh, thoughtfulness for everyone. I have a question. Who asked you? Have your damn 40th birthday party. If the people that are around you and everything like that feel uncomfortable, they probably will decline your offer. 
So those that chose to want to go or that wanted to be by you, you've made the decision for them too. That's craziness. Not to mention the fact that you sound miserable and you sound happy in being miserable. The thing about that is, is when you project that onto other people, they're not so happy about being miserable. And I guarantee you that if you don't invite them to your party, they're going to go somewhere else. Especially if all your friends are vaccinated. Wasn't that the point? Instead of asking what's my risk, I've, trust, I've tried to ask what's my contribution to everyone's risk. As long as you're not breaking the law or hurting somebody, nothing. I've done things that personally inconvenience me to avoid contributing to the much greater societal inconvenience of say, a collapsed healthcare system. I still mask indoors. I still eat outdoors at restaurants. I still avoid large gatherings. I'm still writing articles that take a toll on my own resilience to help our readers make sense of a crisis that I desperately want to never think about again. I've tried to put we over me. How gallant. Once again, who are you? Are you really this almighty and all powerful or are you just virtue signaling for your paycheck? A birthday party is almost the antithesis. There he goes again with almost. Either it is or it isn't. That's like being almost pregnant. Of that ethic, an asymmetric gathering in which we celebrate me, I talked with my wife Liz and two of my colleagues about ways of migrating the risks, could we ask people to do a rapid test just before coming? Well, you didn't seem to have a problem with it for Thanksgiving. Why would you change for your birthday? But ultimately, simply canceling felt easier and safer. Yeah, of course, and you'd probably save a shitload of money, too. Not buying all that food and drinks and everything else for everybody. The growing number of antidotes about outbreaks within boosted parties has only made me feel more confident about that choice. It hasn't changed your mind about the boosters or any of that stuff, though. This stuff, you know, you've taken three, sometimes four doses of it already and still getting sick. These decisions are hard. Oh, you're so... Talk about dramatic. All right, yeah. Melodrama. These decisions are so hard. Didn't sound like it was that hard for me to you. You were even able to write about it. Plans and hopes have their own inertia, and canceling things is a pain. It doesn't sound like you planned it in the first place. You were going to do it. But you decided no. Had you sent out invitations? Had you done anything in advance yet? No, it wasn't a pain. You didn't plan anything to begin with. You were thinking about having it and then you planned not to. A birthday party isn't ultimately a big deal, but I'm still sad about not seeing my friends and a celebration would certainly have improved my fraying mental health. This is what I'm talking about. You're miserable already, and you've made yourself more miserable. And you want everybody to go down this road with you. No, I don't think so. Those trade-offs, which we've been asked to make now for almost two years, have an erosive power as they add up. So, when are you going to start saying no? You actually could have had the birthday party, and I don't think the, the feds or anybody else would have had a problem with it. You're doing this to yourself on their order. That's crazy. Our Christmas will also be quiet. I don't know how to think about everyone else's. For two straight years, America's leaders have largely punted the responsibility for controlling the pandemic to individuals. Yeah, <laughs> because <laughs> the Constitution says that they can't actually do some of the stuff that they've been doing to us over this. So let's get it over with. Let's do our thing and adapt like we always do and get this over with. Our leaders are obviously useless and have been. 
Again, you're complaining about something that you could have done something about, but you're writing about how sad you are for not having a birthday party and how much this makes you even sadder that your mental health has gone down the drain for the last two years because of what these people have been doing to you. This is the most circular article I've ever seen in my life, and it says nothing other than you're a scaredy cat. And you're blaming everybody else, including people that you don't even know, that you don't know. I feel sorry for you, dude. I really do. And now Omicron leaves said people with few options beyond boosting, masking, and the one nobody wants to hear, avoiding social gatherings. If people really hunker down over the next week, eschewing the kinds of exposures that they would have felt comfortable with a mere month ago, they might be in a more secure position to gather by Christmas. No. You gotta stop going backwards. We've got to stop going backwards. Not to mention the fact that they said that this new strain is highly contagious but extremely mild in fact i've actually seen memes and i'll show you one where they literally use nyquil to help the symptoms <sighs> mind you i'm not giving any medical advice I'm only repeating the things that I've been seeing. That's all, it, that's all I'm doing. That's all I'm doing. I have no stake in this, but articles like this just, they, they make me crazy because it, on the one hand, yes. On the other hand, no, it's double speak. And someone that's so afraid to do anything in this day and age now because of possibly this and possibly that, that they've made themselves miserable more miserable and they've pretty much shunned their friends and family you know it's not that i don't want you to come but it's that i don't want to i don't want you to come i'm afraid that you might spread something because i noticed he's never mentioned about his own self giving these people this stuff he's mentioned he keeps mentioning about bringing people together and they would spread it see it was never about whether he would get it or not or anything. He's trying to control all the other people in his life over this. And it's stupid because like I said before, if they don't go to your party, they're going to go somewhere else. You can't blame yourself for uh, what they do, even if they come to your party. And like I said, if they were afraid, if they had a problem with it, they would probably decline your offer, which would be okay. And that's actually the thing that would keep everybody the safest. Let the healthy people do what they need to do while the sick people get well. But as my colleague Ian Bogost has written another hyperlink to go quick, quick, go read this before you end this. I don't want you to see the rest of it. <laughs> Probably not, but still. To have to wrangle with these choices again, just as the holiday season begins, feels like a cruel joke. You know, life has never been fair. I don't understand these people that think that life is always fair. They should always be, never be inconvenienced. And when they have to decide not to do something that they really want to do, that it makes all the difference in the world. This is a melodramatic person, very. In fact, to be honest with you, if I didn't realize, unless, of course, you never know these days. I don't haven't seen a picture of him. He did. He, they did say something about his wife or her wife. I don't know who these people are, but if I wasn't, if I was not mistaken, this, if this is a guy, he writes like a chick. In my opinion, it is easy to despair, but we cannot afford the luxury luxury of nihilism. Grim, rough, grim. Though the stories I've written. Once again, he wants you to go read his other shit. Maybe I have tried to infuse everyone with some hope. No, you haven't. No, you haven't. Throughout this whole thing, you're saying that you're miserable. You had to, you had to inconvenience yourself by canceling something. You don't get to see your friends and family. And it's all because of the fact that you're afraid that people that you don't even know might get this virus because of something you did. Not even because you had it. And yeah, it is easy to despair. In fact, this particular article takes people up and down. In my opinion. Not to mention the fact he says on here, all of his stories have been grim. So 
so yeah but don't despair i'm gonna keep writing shit that's gonna bring you down but don't despair i don't have any good news for you <laughs> i have tried to infuse everyone with some hope with the acknowledgement that a better future is at least possible if not probable yeah, if you go about your business and keep doing yourself and succeeding and not worrying about what everybody else thinks and how everybody else is going to react, especially people you don't even know, by virtue of governmental control or by virtue of uh, we all need to do something as a collective, it's crap. Once again, if you don't take care of yourself, you will be unable to take care of anyone else. This collective crap is for the birds because it still ends up screwing the minorities, whoever they end up being in whatever collective they are. And despite everything, I firmly believe that it is. Failed systems constrain us, another hyperlink. But we ha still have agency and all of our choices matter immensely. No, they don't. Most people don't even give a damn. You do you. Like I said, you do you. Nobody, to be honest with you, I read this because probably absolutely nobody else gives a shit about your cancellation of your 40th birthday party. I feel sorry for you. I feel sorry that you feel subjugated enough to where you would miss out on a milestone like that with your friends and family. You had all kinds of safety precautions, but you're like, nah, fuck it. Everybody can just go to hell. I'm not going to catch it from them people and I'm not going to allow them to pass it or spread it to anybody else, even though they may or may not be asymptomatic. Plus, you're also going to have them, you also decided you had them tested before they got there. But the tests don't matter either. Failed systems constrain us. Yeah. <laughs> Our government has literally made people self subjugate themselves to this misery. And it is a failed system. But you're constraining yourself, buddy. I don't see anybody else coming around and twisting in your arm. The infectious nature of a virus means that a tiny bad decision can cause exponential harm, but also that a tiny wise decision can do exponential good. This time last year, with effective vaccines and a new administration on the horizon, I tweeted that I was gently hopeful about having, being able to have a party. That wasn't to be. But canceling doesn't mean I can't have a joyful weekend. True, that is a choice. Or that I can't have a party again. That's a choice too, and I don't think anybody would have cared if you had this party. Or even a 40th birthday party again. Now that you can't have. You won't ever be 40 again. You will never turn 40 again. So no, you really can't have another 40th birthday. You can pretend. And if you, before you turn 41, you might be able to have a belated 40th birthday party. But nope, you will never have another 40th. I can imagine reviving the idea if transmission falls back to a gentle simmer. The transmission isn't the problem in this case anymore. The cost of waiting for such a moment feels low and certainly much lower than the consequences of reckless impatient. impatience. Not necessarily. And what is right? What, what, what do you mean reckless impatience? You're not being impatient if you're celebrating a birthday on your birthday. That's, how is that impatient? Sheesh. Melodrama. And I know, despite the relentless nature of the past two years, that pande pandemics do eventually end. Yeah, but will the mandates and all the other governmental crap that now that they've noticed that they can take advantage of that end? We'll see. I guess we'll see. And his tweet from 2020. I turned 40 a year today, and I'm gently hopeful about being able to have a party by then. Gently hopeful. <sighs> gently hopeful, he says. I really don't think anybody would have had any qualms about him having his party. Once again, this article shows me that people are 
purposefully making themselves miserable and sacrificing the things that are important to them for people that they don't even know and trying to push this collective which collective if you don't know is already instilled or instituted by individuals now like I say you can't fault the guy for trying to be considerate of others and consideration only goes so far as far as that goes too like I said before he not only deprived himself of his own 40th birthday, but he deprived all of his family, friends, anybody else that wanted to share that with him. He deprived them of actually making that decision. If he'd have had his party, again, I don't think the government would have come and shut him down. Uh, but if he'd have had his party, his adult guests and patrons would have been able to make the decision on their own. Hey, look, man. I'm too scared of COVID. I'm not going to I'm not going to show up. Or I have someone that has COVID. I'm not going to show up. Or, you know, I don't feel comfortable. I'm not going to show up. But he didn't even give them that choice. He literally made decisions for people that he didn't even know that he didn't know. And again, as chivalrous as that sounds, the majority of this was bullshit in his article. A lot of it was coulds and shoulds and maybes. Uh, it's like if you're not you know, just the way he wrote it sound like he was sounded like he was unsure of even the decision that he ultimately made. And then tried to justify it by, well, it was less of an inconvenience this way than that way. It was just easier to, to cancel. And the thing was, is he didn't have anything planned in the first place. He wanted to have this party, but I don't think he even invited the first person yet before he decided to cancel the party. So it was no work at all except for a little brain work, which actually didn't sound very brainy at all he's listening to he even admits that he listened to antidotes and of course you can tell by the way he almost was giddy about the new administration on the horizon who he voted for he couldn't wait for good old lion joe to continue to be ineffective and lie some more the man does nothing but lie that I can tell. And then uh, I'm wondering, actually, they expected us to believe him when he came out and said that there's no federal solution for this virus now. So which is it? So he ran on eliminating this virus. What, did people just think he was going to wave his arm? Be gone. Be gone, Rusty. Be gone. Give me a break. So, I just thought you guys would like to know what kind of person is actually out there trying to rule the world right now. And to me, they sound rather pathetic. Anybody who would sacrifice themselves this much for the common good has, I think their brain has dripped out of their ear or they're listening to the wrong people. Or in his case, since he's a mainstream mediaite, The Atlantic is a left-leaning paper, from what I can from what I can gather he's being paid to spread this crap and who was his audience in this case high school girls 20 somethings 30 somethings this all sounded very melodramatic to the point where he even had to explain that it wasn't and if you have to explain something that like that it's the opposite well I can tell you one thing, I'm never ever going to uh, have a subscription to The Atlantic. In fact, it was kind of mind aids to me just reading this one article, and it's even mind aids when I hear other people talk about The Atlantic, but I had to know for myself. And when I saw the headline to this particular article, why I canceled my birthday party because of COVID, especially two years into it, I thought, yeah. They're trying to scare us again. Hey man, I don't give out medical information. I don't give out medical advice. All I can tell you is the things that I've experienced and the things that I've seen. And I'm way more apt to believe a person's point of view than I am the news or any other uh, entity that tries to influence the masses. I've always been told, don't follow the masses because sometimes the M is silent. I do hope you enjoyed my video today. 
Thank you for everyone that's been coming to all of my live shows. I do hope you guys are enjoying them. Uh, once again, I am live on Thursdays at 7 p.m. Central Time, 5 o'clock Avocado Time. All Salty Berserkers welcome! Of course, everyone is welcome, but we especially appreciate the Salty Berserkers. Please, if you like what you see and you'd like for me to continue my work, which I really would like to do, especially the call-in talk shows, make sure that you subscribe, like, comment, um, and donation, and a donation would be the ultimate. Of course, sharing would be great too, that's a big help. And don't forget to come see me at 7 o'clock on Thursdays where the world wants to know what you have to say. So call me and tell them like it is. Thank you for clicking on my little acre of the internet today. Until next time!